Hey guys, it's Kay. I hope you're all well. Now, we all know the Raspberry Pi, which is the go-to choice when someone needs a recommendation for a PC that can handle light tasks such as running a smart home or a home automation system, setting up a web server, coding, or teaching the kids about computers. It is a great piece of kit, but lately it's become a victim of its own success because it's been consistently out of stock for the past three years or so. And when it is available, the prices tend to skyrocket. If you're a tinkerer like me, you start looking elsewhere. So after a bit of research, I came up with this alternative. It's the Zimmerboard by Ice Whale Tech. Now, although it's been out on the market for some time, it's not widely talked about in the tech tinkerer's world. The Zimmerboard boasts a hackable single board server and an attractive design with a gunmetal finish with orange accents, which I personally like because it gives it that retro look. Now, if you are wondering, the Zimmerboard does come in three configurations. There's the 216 model, which comes with two cores, two gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigabytes of memory. There's also the 432, which I've got, and it's got four cores, four gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of memory. And lastly, you get the 832, which is basically the same model as mine, but you get eight gigabytes of RAM. And depending on the configuration, the price ranges from $119 to $199. So in the box, we get another box. And the first thing we see is the user manual, which is short and sweet. It tells you everything you need to know to get started. And these steps basically consist of plugging in the power supply provided, attaching a network cable which isn't supplied, and then opening up a web browser on your device and typing in the home address of the Zimmer board, more of which I'll show you later in the video. So this is the Zimmer board, and straight away I can feel this is a solid device. It's got some weight to it. And the shell is made out of solid metal with these fins on for cooling, as there's no fans in the device, which means you're going to get silent operation and you can tuck it away in a cupboard. On the back, we've got a solid Perspex cover, which is removable with these four screws, and you can slightly see the PC board through it. Now, the cool thing we're getting with the Zimmer board is the two gigabyte Ethernet ports, which are ideal for firewall applications, and two USB 3 ports, along with other features like a mini display port 1.2, capable of an impressive 4K at 60 Hz. You also get expandable storage options with the two SATA ports and a PCI Express 2 by 4 slot. In the box, you also get a SATA cable to make use of that PCI 4 port. So you can add all sorts of PCIe expansion cards or even SSDs, which are all available on the Zimmer board website at a reasonable price. Also in the box is the power adapter, which is 12 volts at 3 amps. And rather cleverly, it comes with three adapters, one for the US, one for the UK, and one for Europe, I think. And they're basically hot swappable. You just twist and turn and click. So in all, this is all you get in the box. All you need to do to get started is plug in the power, plug in an ethernet cable for your internet, and then just wait for the network lights to flash and you know you're connected. And to use the Zimmer board, just open up your internet browser on any device and type in the following address and it will take you to the homepage of the Casa OS on the Zimmer board, where you'll be prompted to create an account and all you have to do is create a username and a password. So this is the Casa OS dashboard and you can do a lot of things from here, including install and uninstall apps and monitor the system. And if we go over to the settings, I can see we've already got an update to install. So I'm going to go ahead and install that. So as you can see so far, it's quite an intuitive setup. It's an ideal setup for newbies. Now, once the update is installed, it just reboots. And we're back on the dashboard. Now, I know everybody's interested in apps. So let's take a quick look inside the App Store. And straight away, you can see there's tons of useful apps, including AdGuard Home, Home Assistant, Jellyfin, and even apps like Pyel and Plex. Installing an app is quite straightforward, just choose the one you want to install. You'll get all the information about it with some thumbnails, including a short description. So I'm going to go ahead and install Home Assistant, which is a home automation system. And if you are interested in me doing more videos about setting up Home Assistant on the Zimmer board, do leave a like on this video. So again, we've got information about the app, including thumbnails, size of the file, developer name. And the cool thing here is we also get the actual memory required to run the app. So with four gigs of RAM, I don't think there's going to be an issue. Now, while the software is installing, you can go ahead and do other things. You can just click the continue in background button and you can see a tile appears on the dashboard showing us the installation progress. The other thing I want to install on the Zimmer board is the Jellyfish NAS. So again, it's a straightforward process. Just click and install. And now you can see we've got two tiles showing us the installation progress on both these apps. So while those are installing, let's take another look at the App Store. Now, while there is a large selection of useful apps here, you can actually also install apps manually. Just click on the custom install button on the top of the page. And all you do is just fill in the details of this page, which I will be showing you how to do later in the video when I install TV head end. 
which is going to give us that IPT functionality and the ability to watch live streams. OK, back on the dashboard, we also get a pre-installed file explorer where you can perform the usual functions on files and folders. Now, back on the desktop, we've got different tiles for different bits of information. You've got your system status with CPU and RAM usage. And if you click on this little arrow, it'll actually show you how much each app is using of the CPU and RAM. But currently, I've got nothing running. We've also got storage information. And if I click on the cog, I'll get some more information, including information about your drive. We've also got a little tile for our network activity. And we can also control how our widgets work. Up top, we've got more settings. We can toggle the search bar on or off. We can change our search engine, language, web UI port, and what we all want, changing the wallpaper. Would be great to have an automatically changing wallpaper. On the settings menu, you can also toggle on and off the newsfeed from Kaza OS. Again, you can toggle the recommended apps and auto mount USB drives. Check for the latest updates and restart and switch off the Zimmer board. We've also got access to the terminal and logs if you want to input commands manually. OK, as you can see, the apps have installed now. So let's take a look at these. We've got Home Assistant and Jellyfin. So it takes us straight into the Home Assistant startup page. And we just need to create an account or log in. And if we take a quick look at Jellyfin, it's a similar process. We have to create an account or log in. So guys, that's a quick overall look at the Zimmer board. And it's definitely a worthy contender for the Raspberry Pi. And I think this is a great product. We could do with a few more pre-installed apps, but you can do that yourselves. And I'll show you how to do that now. Head on over to the App Store, click on Custom Install. You'll get this form come up and you need to fill this out. Click on the Import button and we'll get an Import window come up. And we're going to paste in a Docker CLI here, which will fill in that form for us. Now getting these extra applications is quite straightforward. I just headed over to the linuxserver.io webpage and you can get the link from the Zimmerboard website. Click on the Fleet link and you'll get a list of extra applications you can install. And as you can see, guys, there's a lot here you can choose from. Apps like Audacity, Blender, Cloud9, Code Server, Chromium, MB, to name a few. And I do like the way it's arranged. It gives you some very useful information like build time and the number of polls, which lets you know how popular an app is. OK, so I'm looking for a TV headend and here it is. So I'm going to select it and it takes you to its dedicated page where you've got a lot more information you can look at. But what we want is a CLI script. So click on this link. And don't worry guys, that's the last link we're going to click. So scroll all the way down, you'll get more information about the app. And this is quite an important bit here. It's got the supported architecture. And what we want to make sure is that the app is supported on the x86 architecture. And in this case it is. So we can proceed and scroll all the way down until we get to the script. Now all this information here is basically telling us how to use the app. So let's go down past that until we get to the CLI. And I think this is it, the Docker CLI. And what we want to do is select all and copy and then head back to our Zimmer board and then just paste that script in this window and click submit. Now, some of these lines are optional, so you can delete those optional lines and you'll get this little window pop up telling you that you need to configure some of the ports yourself manually in some cases. But in this case, we're OK to go with the default. So once you click OK, you'll see that the installer app manually page is partially filled out and all we need to do is click on install. Now this install took about three to four minutes and you can click on continue in background if you like. And once it's done, you'll see on the home page a new tile appear. And that's our new TV head end application. And let's just check if it works. And of course it does work. And there's our TV head end front end ready to set up. Now, if you do want me to show you how to set up TV head end on the Zimmer board, let me know in the comments below. So guys, overall the Zimmer board 832 stands out as a high performing single board server. And being equipped with a quad core ARM processor and four gigs of RAM, it can easily handle multiple applications and services simultaneously. And it ran various Docker stations simultaneously, including streaming media from Plex servers and seamlessly running the home server app. So overall, the Zimmerboard 832 is a great single board server and it impresses with its performance and an extensive array of features. It also boasts a user friendly setup process and comes bundled with pre-installed software with an easy to follow user guide so even beginners will find it effortless to navigate. So the Zimmer board 832 is definitely worth considering if you're in the market for a single board computer. And especially now as other boards are hard to get a hold of.